We are uh, reviewing for our test over sections 4.1 to 4.4. Okay, so everything you see in this PowerPoint, um, all the questions that we're practicing are very similar to what you're going to see on your test. All right, so this is our test review over 4.1 to 4.4. Um, in the first uh, set of problems, we have one-step equations. What does that mean? That means that there's one step to get the variable by itself, okay? And we do inverse operations to do that. And it's very important that we show our work here because we know that these concepts get much harder as we move into the higher level concepts throughout this year and into Algebra 1. We have to understand inverse operations. Okay, so subtract 2.7 from both sides. Why did I subtract? Why not add? Why not? Yeah, because it's already addition here. Okay, so that's why I show subtraction on both sides and x equals 7.1. All right, guys, if you don't show your work, you can't get full credit. All right, please show me your steps. Okay, now what do I do to the second equation to solve for x? I'm dividing, but essentially when I divide a fraction, that is like multiplying by the reciprocal because I do the KFC method. So that's what I do. I multiply both sides by the inverse or the reciprocal, and I get 48. Okay, raise your hand if you got both of those right. Both right, 48. Okay, that's the first section on your test, just our equations. Okay, now let's do two-step equations. Guys, the only difference here, are you listening? Okay, I know I'll let you kind of sit with your friends today, but I need you to listen. Okay? What we do here is we focus first on the term that is not connected to the variable, and we move that term first. Okay? I'm going to be walking around looking at your work as you solve these. Now, the second one over here, what do you see here in these parentheses? You see distributed property? which we actually have not done solving equations, but you do have distributed property on your test and your review section. So I kind of threw it in here. Once you distribute it though, it's just a regular two-step equation, okay? So don't worry though, you don't have distributed property for equations on your test, but we actually do already know how to do this, okay? So um, let's go ahead and solve both of these. Okay, what do I do first? Hold on. Guys, what do I do first on the first equation? What do I do first? Come on. Add 17. Add 17. Very good. Okay. Add 17 to both sides, and I get 27. Guys, you need to rewrite the equation. You've got to rewrite it. Now, what do you do to get x by itself? Multiply by 8 over 3. Okay. That cancels out the fraction. Now, multiply the other side by 8 over 3. Your answer is 72. Okay, who got 72? All right. Now, on the distributive part, negative 2. It's important, guys, that you remember this because you actually you have at least one or two questions on your test, not with equations, but as a review for distributive property. What is negative 2 times 8x? Please. Thank you. Negative 16x. All right, please don't forget those concepts. Those are very important. You guys did very well on that test. I know you know how to do that. All right, negative 16x. What is negative 2 times negative 1? Positive 2. Positive 2. Okay. Now, this is going to look a little weird, right? Because when I subtract 2 from both sides, I get 3. Negative 16x equals 3. All right. What do I divide by? Yeah, I still divide by negative 16 even though I know my answer is going to be a fraction. Guys, let me tell you this, okay? I think it really kind of sometimes messes with your head when you are expecting to see a whole number in your answer and you see a fraction instead. You had one of these on your quiz, okay? It is okay for your answer to be a fraction or a decimal. All right, don't question it. I mean, it's always a great idea to double check, but sometimes it just happens that way. Clearing fractions. Uh, this is a concept that I have seen quite a bit of struggle, okay? Now, 
Guys, please listen. Look up here. All right? You need to find the LCD. I, I've kind of dropped that hint to you guys, and we've practiced this. But you're confused between LCD and GCF. LCD is least common denominator, the smallest number that every all the numbers can go into. Okay? So it can't be 7 because 14 doesn't go into 7. So that's why I tell you to choose the largest denominator. And then see if all the numbers go into that. If they don't, go to the next multiple of that number and see if they all go into that number. Okay? Well, for 14, does 7 go into 14? Yes. Does 14 go into itself? No, Absolutely. Yes. Okay? So 14 is my LCD. So what do I do with that? What do I do with that knowledge that 14 is my LCD? I need to multiply each fraction by 14. Okay? Multiply each fraction by 14. All right, so go ahead and do that and then rewrite your equation. All right, it's really important. I think once you guys can understand what's happening here, um, it'll be much, much easier for you. So everybody needs to be looking up here. You multiply each one. So your denominator cross cancels and you're left with a 2 because 7 goes into 14 two times. 2 times 6 is 12. Plus, your 7 cross reduces to a 2, and 2 times 5 is 10x. Now your 14 is completely canceled, so it equals 3. Now you have your two-step equation. What do you do first to get x by itself? Tell me. Subtract 12 to get it to cancel. Subtract 12 by the other side, and you get 10x equals negative 9. Now what do you do to both sides? Divide, divide it by 10 and divide it by 10. This problem is probably going to end up being one of those problems that separates my perfect scores from my not perfect scores. Okay, based on the quizzes yesterday, this was one of the higher percentage of missed problems. Okay, so um, use your LCDs to clear them, guys. All right, now let's talk inequalities for the rest of the review. Okay, now. On your quiz, I gave you a section. Did I tell you to write the inequality? No. no. I want a value that would represent the situation. So you do need to understand in practical terms where the cutoff is. Is 5 the minimum or is 5 the most? And that will help you come up with a sample answer. Just a value that would represent the situation. Go ahead and do that for each one of these situations. Give me a number. Do not give me an inequality. If you want to write the inequality, that's fine. But that does not earn you credit. The value is what I'm looking for in this section. Okay, give me some numbers. At least five students entered their competition. Gabe? Give me a number. Isaiah? No. At least five, guys. Six. What's another one? Nine. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, fewer than 3,000 people. How about 2,000? Yes. It's got to be less. How about 2,999? I love how y'all like pushing the limits, right? Okay. Kids can be no more than 50 pounds. So how much can they weigh? 49. They can't weigh negative. I'm going to mark that wrong. Okay? It's got to be realistic, guys. All right, 30. Okay, now in the next section, guys, listen. Hush. Listen. Now in the next section, I do want you to write the inequality. Now you're translating it. Guess what, guys? There has to be a variable in the inequality. That's what a number means, okay? Don't give it a value. Just write X or N or some other variable, okay? So your inequality needs a variable, an operation, add, subtract, multiply, divide, and an inequality symbol. The keywords in the sentence tell you what inequality symbol to use and what operation to use. Go ahead and do these two problems. I'm going to walk around and check. 
So I see a number times five. Do I write it like this, n times five? Is that how I'm supposed to write it? No, I write it five n is at most, so it means it cannot be more than, so it has to be less than or equal to 10. At most, guys, that means it cannot exceed that value. It has to be less than or equal to. If you cannot think about that practically, that is something that you can memorize. At most means less than or equal to, always, okay? Now, how would I write a number minus 12? P minus 12. P minus 12, N minus 12, however you want to say it, N minus 12. What, uh, what stands for greater than or equal to? Greater than. Greater than or equal to. <laughs> okay, 15. 15. All right, did anybody get both of those right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, guys, this is where we saw some mistakes. Again, this is where we could see some deductions on the test tomorrow if you don't know your keywords. All right, testing solutions. What am I doing here? What is the whole purpose here? What am I doing? Can anybody tell me? Is there only one solution to an inequality? No. So here's what it's saying. Here's your inequality. Now test to see whether or not this would be a solution. It might be yes, it might be no. All right, so I had some of you on your quiz yesterday trying to make it true so you were changing the inequality and the values to make it true and while i appreciate the effort that's not what it's asking you to do in this section it just wants you to test it it's negative for a solution plug it in and show me what you get when you multiply all right so for the most part i had everybody showing work but i still have some people not showing me their work and on this type of problem, I can't give you credit if you just say yes or no with no work, okay? So plug it in, show your work, show your answer, then say yes or no. All right, um, four times negative four is greater than 48. Is negative 16 greater than 48? No, it's not, okay? My answer is no, it's not. Don't give me a solution that would be. Just tell me it's not. All right. Now, negative 3 plus, or I'm sorry, negative 3 plus negative 9, what does that equal? Negative 12 is greater than or equal to negative 12. That's actually true because it has the equal to part. Negative 12 does equal negative 12, so it's yes. Okay. So testing solutions. The last uh, thing we need to go over is graphing your inequalities. All right, what numbers belong? Um, we have time, we have time. Do the first one. Go ahead and do the first one. You've got a couple minutes. I wanna at least give you one to practice and I'll show you the second one. I, don't, I didn't give you a value, I just want you to graph the solution. All right, so three numbers belong on the graph. Do your three numbers match my three numbers? Yes. Is there an open or a closed dot? Closed. Closed. How do you know it's closed? Because it says uh, equal. It's negative. Because it's e no, because it's equal to. Okay? And does my arrow go left or right? Left. To the left for less than. To the left for less than. So what I'm saying is that any solution less than or equal to negative 5 would make this inequality true. Give me a number less than negative 5. Negative 4. Seven. Negative 7, negative 10, negative 20. Any one of those numbers. Guys, please be quiet. That's what my graph is showing me. All right, so on the last graph, A is greater than 3. We're just going to do this real quick. <clears throat> Running short on time. 3. What number belongs to the left of 3? 2. 2. And then four, remember these are positives. Where is zero? Zero is off to the left. Open or closed dot? Open. Arrow going right or left? Right. Right. To the right for greater than. Okay? All right. Uh, now, here is your review section. Okay? Again, because we only have a few minutes left, I'm just going to go through this, but it's on the recording for you guys to go back and look. Oh, which concepts did she say was on there? 
so you can go back and review and study from chapters 1 through 3. Can anybody give me an expression that would have a solution of 12? I, it can be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. I don't care. Miles? No, give me the numbers. 3 times 4 equals 12. Can anybody give me another expression that would equal 12? 9 plus 3. Anyone involving negatives? Me, I can do that. Miles? Mm, negative 20. No, neg, positive 20 minus 8. Minus negative. Okay, 20 minus 8 is 12. What about negative, uh, negative 20 plus 32? Okay, it would be 12. All right, now the next one, finding the mean. How could I find the mean? How could I find the mean? Add them all together. Yes, add them all together, and what do I divide by? The number of numbers. The number of numbers. Now, negative 10 and negative 20 make negative 30, plus 30 is actually 0. So you can use your inverses, and then 30 divided by 5 would be 6, okay? Uh, what can I simplify here on the simplify part? What can I simplify, guys? Negative 4x minus 3x is what? Negative 7x. And what's 15 minus 20? Negative 5. Are you paying attention? Yep. Okay, look up here. Factor using the GCF. How can I figure out my GCF? What's a really fast way? List your factors. You're looking for the largest number. Does 12 go into both numbers? So factor out your 12. Okay. And what's left inside if I factor out 12? Uh, 12 Negative 1x. One one X. X. And then what is 60 divided by 12? Five. Plus 5. Okay, you might want to go back and review that if you don't remember factoring. That's really important. Okay, this tells me specifically to factor out negative 4. So if I pull a negative 4 out of the expression, what is left inside? One. One. Okay, what's negative 16 divided by negative 4? Four. Four. Po positive. Positive 4. And it is true that negative 4 times positive 4 would give me that negative 16. All right, so review factoring, review simplifying, review finding the mean. Um, and we did say that our answer was going to be 6 on the mean. Okay, and that's everything you need to know for your test tomorrow.